Today's video is all about, say, enabling mass adoption of digital assets. We're going to be doing a deep dive in this video, looking at some of the value propositions, tokenomics, the team, and much, much more. We essentially want to figure out if this project is worthy of making it to our bullish portfolio for the up and coming bull run. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the altcoins looking for opportunities. And of course, today's project is about say it's going to be a deep dive into this project. We're going to figure out ultimately if this project has what it takes to make it to our portfolio for the up and coming bull run. Does it have all the tokenomics? Is the team is strong? Is the value proposition there? Is it solving a real world? world problem that we need and ultimately if that utility is there this ecosystem could definitely have definitely have some really good bullish attributes to make us fundamentally bullish for the up and coming bull run okay guys let's begin first off we're going to be using this website as our main platform to navigate this project we're hoping that at the same time as we're using the website we are able to judge whether this website is also up to par. A lot of these, um, you know, projects, they eventually they post their website, they get their website going and they don't upkeep it. And that's a big issue because we know that in crypto, everything is always moving. Everything's always changing. There's updates along the way. So we want to make sure this website is up to par. So we're going to be critiquing this website alongside trying to figure out, um, you know, some of the fundamentals here. All right, let's begin. So enabling mass adoption of digital assets. It's a very broad statement, but it's very interesting because because, you know, obviously a lot of what we're trying to achieve in the next uh, little while is uh, the adoption part, you know, crypto being ma within the mass adoption phase uh, in the up and coming bull run. That's a big, big value proposition right there. And of course, the digital asset space. This is where we belong. So uh, thinking about adoption of digital assets, guys, is what we need. But the question is, is that uh, aren't other projects doing a very similar thing and hoping to um, enable that same concept? So let's see what say is and what it actually does to set itself apart from the competition because i believe as a layer one because it is it say is the fastest apparently let's keep it uh, at that you know all of these layer ones say that they're fastest but it's the fastest layer one blockchain designed to scale with the industry okay so uh, we're not going to critique whether that's true or not what we can say though it is fast okay it is fast i've used it it is very fast and there's no uh, there's no you know dispute about that but if we're going to start comparing it to other projects guys there's going to be people there's going to be evidence that maybe not may not be the case it's not the point it's fast enough it's good right let's move on we'll talk about a lot of these other things we'll look at the ecosystem in a second the transaction finality is fast order per second fast 100 million plus total testnet transactions and testnet users guys we're still in testnet okay trusted by world-class operators investors and institutions so there's a few people involved here we're looking at coinbase okay we're looking at uh multi-coin capital of course uh what else uh, um, delphi digital big heavyweight in the crypto space layer zero another one step in that's another project that we uh that is has been doing pretty good in the last little while so overall guys there's some good institutions and investors involved in this project that's they wouldn't be necessarily considered or uh, considered a uh um, um, a partner let's say because obviously the wording doesn't suggest they are but they're definitely involved in some sort of way and of course details into that involvement would be key and um you know i did try to look around to see how coinbase is directly involved and so on um, and there was not much out there, right? You're gonna have to, you know, dig around. And unfortunately, you know, if the if the information was that important, you shouldn't have to dig around and start, you know, private investigating all of this stuff. So I, I was hoping that you can click on some of this and maybe take you to a bit of, um, you know, some detail with regards to their um, involvement and so on. But nonetheless, to see the names here, there has to be something there. Pretty pretty bullish, powerful infrastructure, um, unparalleled speed. Again, this concept of speed, turbo consensus, security first user centric all good things all very very st staple like statements that a lot of these layer ones uh, use within their value proposition proposals okay so we have to understand that this is the competitive space they're still within the realm of co competition what sets them apart perhaps that speed aspect right we're going to look at a little bit of this comparison 
Okay, we know that Bitcoin's not fast. We get it. We know that Ethereum has its issues. We get it. Um, the only one that right now is would be considered a an actual competitor would, would be Solana. And you can see the Solana right now is at 10,000 TPS and say is right now at 20,000 OPS. The unit of measurement is different, guys. I don't know why they would choose to frame it this way. It looks a bit deceiving. I don't know what OPS and TPS, the difference is. Um, obviously, transaction per second. And here we have the operations per second. Now, what's the difference between an operation and a transaction? Ultimately, for me, um, it's a transaction that matters. Obviously, the, the transaction on the network, but operations, I'm not sure exactly where they're going with that. Okay, so it would be nice to see the same unit of measurement so we can compare apples with apples. For me, that's a little bit of a problematic thing. I would rethink this ultimately. Um, finality, obviously, uh, milliseconds we're talking here. Uh, front running uh, prevention, of course, there is. That's one of their things. Paral uh, parallelized uh, processing style, which is uh, one step up from Ethereum, but Solana and a lot of other blockchains offer that feature which is basically a feature where uh processing um is not done sequentially one after the other right more than one process can happen almost like multi-threaded or uh multi-processing parallel processing capabilities uh, be able be able to process two transactions at the same time so they're parallelized so that's pretty good um ultimately very competitive with solana and offering that feature and proof of stake which is again one of the concepts of um that we've been seeing in the last um i would say a good year that a lot of these layers want to become um uh, you know um free of potential regulation and all of that uh, given that if they are proof of stake, they won't be considered a security. And this is a big talk in the last little while, of course. Um, nonetheless, there's still some value for proof of work. But, you know, a lot of these layer ones are choosing proof of stake. And some of them are even moving back to proof of work. So this is the whole concept here. I think it's right now it's based off of preference. I don't think there's a major, major, um, you know, a deal breaker either way. Either way, Solana and Say are doing pretty good here. Um, and, you know, if you're going to compare with Solana right now, the only thing that really interests me is the speed aspect right the speed aspect for me is important and i wish they used the same unit of measurement um but nonetheless looking pretty good okay so say let's give it that it does have the upper hand and i've seen charts where solana is actually faster so i don't know i'm not even sure i'm not even sure if i want to believe um either or okay keep it very neutral they're fast they're good they do what they have to do okay who's building on say so there's uh, an ecosystem that we really have to understand that is 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 present and it's very very present Okay, see, Say's ecosystem is one of the fastest growing ecosystems in the fact that they came out just recently. They are really, really robust already, and which means that there's a lot of people building on it. There's a lot of potential, and I, I believe it's because of already they have a lot of good involvement from some heavyweights. Like I said, Coinbase, Binance is on that. Um, there's some other good ones that are, um, you know, definitely all involved. And you can see who's building on Say. You have Sushi, DeFi, Oracle, Pith as an Oracle. That's um, an important one because of the speed aspect. You need an oracle that can keep up, and we know that Pith is value uh, uh, proposition is speed, so that would be a good, good. Um let's call it a relationship there um and so on so that's pretty good um they're they're definitely promoting the building of their ecosystem a new blockchain um let's say design space a little bit more uh, engineering high secure fastest blockchain again brand new uh, applications carbon neutral only thing that really offers some value is the the speed aspect the rest of it massive scalability okay i'm hoping that it achieves that there's a lot of good um articles that you could read of course but a lot of it is just a lot a lot of repetition a lot of repetition to what already the website offers so you're feel free to go and check that out and that concludes the website you know i wish there was a little bit more you gotta admit there's some aspects here that are missing like what about the team what about the um roadmap and there's nothing really here there's a white paper that we're going to talk about in a second um the ecosystem let's go check that out let's open this in a new tab ecosystem we have some docs maybe let's go check out the doc section i already have the white paper open already there's the blog the media kit and jobs if you're looking for a job okay let's go take a look at this the, the, the say ecosystem is massive guys it's already well built and there's a couple of things that we've got to consider here 
Number one, it uses Cosmos base layer, which will, which makes it IBC compatible. And given the, that fact, you know, it's going to have a lot of interoperability capabilities with the Cosmos ecosystem, which is good, right? And the future application is to see V2 of, um, say, which will make it EVM compatible. So that's something else that, you know, should be clearly stated on a roadmap, which, you know, I did find some roadmaps hanging around, which were very, very outdated, or it needed a little bit more detail and effort. But we'll talk about the roadmap aspect in a second. But clearly speaking, um, right now here on the ecosystem, it's well established real world assets, they got a little bit of everything. Um, and you can, you must admit, uh, that's a good thing. That's a really, really good thing to see that they have things already um, being built and some interest in the, um, in the ecosystem, right? Utility. Utility is the most important thing, especially as we're talking about this being a layer one. What projects are built on it is going to give their layer one token, which is the say token, some utility. That's going to be the gas fee. That's going to be the the rewards. It's going to be a lot. Of, it's going to be the, the token that um, basically drives the network. And without um, an ecosystem, there's nothing gonna drive it there's no there's no volume there's no interest and right now we're seeing a pretty good ecosystem so um, i'm really bullish on that aspect definitely 100 10 out of 10 for our ecosystem effort here okay and the in the overall um um involvement of partners and people involved in the on the in the project is definitely definitely good all right let's kind of scooch through this a little bit what about say what is it? I think this is a very valuable page, the about. So basically, it's a layer one blockchain specialized for exchange of digital assets. So it's not just any layer one. In fact, its use case is broad, but what they really focused on uh, is the exchange aspect okay which would give it a bit of a specialization you know and it's not just a jack of all trades it also has its focus and its focus is um to be the fastest and most um most most reliable um layer one for digital asset exchanges okay so the vision the uh, super highway for trading activity so they want trading activity trading digital assets not just currencies but maybe nfts non-fungible tokens and this is why we're seeing amazon we're seeing steam sandbox open sea you know you know you know what i mean so we see a lot of non-fungible token general purpose trading so it, it's not just trading tokens it's trading anything right so that's real world assets are a big part of this as well perhaps right so this is what is um, uh, the value proposition and they're trying to build an ecosystem based off this uh, on this concept which is good specialization is always good getting niche doing something very very well and then growing and, and building and then eventually maybe expanding but for now focusing on this is not a bad idea and you can see that they're they're very clear they're software people they understand that ultimately say has to solve a problem and i'm um, coming from a software background myself this is typical this is very typical of a software um, platform is to always think about problem solving and what right now what we're seeing is a fundamental use case of blockchain is the ability to exchange digital assets regardless of their class whatever they are it is gaming social nfts DeFi. it's about exchanging digital assets and that's the backbone behind this marketplace the backbone behind um crypto in general is the assets itself right so this is a good thing this is this is a really decent value proposition right here so they're tr trying to solve a trilemma but it's not a typical trilemma it's a solving exchange trilemma decentralization scalability and capital efficiency they're trying to solve this issue and provide the best solution for all of these um, exchange platforms, whether it be a decentralized exchange or a centralized exchange or even an NFT or you know a non fungible token exchange. Whatever the case is, those exchanges are going to try to use say in a way because it offers the best um, features. It offers the best um, solution to the exchange trilemma, right? So this is a good thing. Again, another really good explanation of what they're trying to achieve and what it offers fastest twin turbo consensus one of the only change to conduct market-based uh, parallelization this is an important thing it's not the only but it is one of the only especially for uh, with this focus of exchanging native uh, matching engine uh front running protection sure malicious front running that ramp up okay fine the front running aspect but really what's really cool here is at least it has a, a nice focus is this not a jack of all trades everywhere it can be but they chose to focus and that for me is a very important thing okay so it might get them give them the ability or the upper hand to dominate in this focus in this space becoming specialized all right so you could develop you can see there's different sections for developers full node via node operator so you can gain rewards 
We'll talk about all that utility aspect of the token itself, because of course it involves rewards, uh, token standards. Let's see what's going on here. Token factory governance. Obviously, this is a DAO. It is a DAO. It is. Um, there's voting voting capabilities if you're a token holder. IBS uh, IBS compatibilities written on off of Cosmos. It, it is written on the base layer of Cosmos, so it is a layer one, but it uses the IBC um, IBC. Um, protocol basically for it to allow a multi uh, multi uh, chain or multi cross platform capabilities um yeah around uh, the uh, osmos um cosmos ecosystem native oracle okay dex module and so on so on so not bad a lot of good stuff here i wish there was a little bit more about uh tokenomics and all of that kind of stuff um, we're gonna have to dig around a little bit about that okay so um i'll come up with something here for you guys let's continue and we'll go, we'll come back to the white paper if we need to um let's see we have this here that i want to look at okay this is that white this is the doc um here we have a token unlock schedule okay so this is an important thing we're jumping around to different aspects here um this is uh, a token unlock obviously this is something that we should be concerned with because uh, it is a newer project and a lot of the tokens are have yet to hit the market meaning that they're locked up and the question is how are they going to be released to the market and what type of schedule what kind of um what kind of um yeah um basically let me see if i can sign in here successfully um we'll sign in as best as we can there we go let's continue 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 there we go. Um, you, you know, ultimately, what we want to understand is that every time tokens get unlocked, it dilutes the price. And that's a negative, right? It, it will definitely bring down the value. People will start selling. And that's something to be concerned with. However, um, you can see that the majority of the unlock starts to happen in a in a few months well august right so we're talking about at the end of the summer uh august 12th august 15th is the next ish the date that we got to be worried about and it's listed right up here august 15th so you have about 200 days or so to actually worry about that but nonetheless what we have to also understand is the token distribution of this project is not the healthiest okay and it wasn't a really really a, a fair launch here because the ecosystem the early investors the uh, private sale investors the team all got a significant amount of tokens well they didn't get them yet but they will get them and the token distribution is as such. We have private sale about 20%. The team is another 20%. And then we have the foundation 9%. All of which were pretty much. And then we have the Binance um, um, liquidity um, at the end of the day. Okay, it's flatline, but it's already unlocked uh, up to this level. There, you know what I mean? So, but ultimately more than, I would say about 49% of them are basically um, held by early stakeholders. You can kind of couple these up, private sale and the team, those individuals, who knows who they are? They could be team members. They could be uh, close people within the circle. They could be, I've seen this in the past, private sale individuals are equal to uh, dump on the market as the team now the team itself has some investment here of course time pride uh career and so on but um to expect no um dilution based on this private sale uh, in my opinion that's a scary thing i would expect that a lot of people in august may consider taking profits and that means that we have some time here to come up with a plan we have about 200 days so you can see 20 percent, 20 percent, and nine percent for the foundation and the foundation run by a dow in this in this case um and the ecosystem reserve is meant to help um build the ecosystem system but nonetheless don't don't forget that right now the majority of the token holders are private sale and the team so who who basically is running the dow at the current moment well it's going to be them right they're going to be making the decisions in the foundation at the current estate so as soon as we start seeing um, a lot more regular individuals let's say holding more of the tokens which right now there's not many um, we can honestly say that the people calling the shots are part of the team right they're not it, there's not enough tokens in distribution to suggest that it's a fair scenario for that DAO to run in a democratic way okay so we got to really understand at the current moment it is still early this project is still a, a lot of the tokens are locked 73 percent of the tokens are still locked okay where the 21 percent are unlocked and out there in circulation and their vesting period obviously is not all at once they're going to have a 
lock up for one year for private sale okay so then released over three three years pretty much linearly and then we have no lock up for the for the binance launch pool which means ultimately it can be sold at any moment the team the um the 20 percent there locked up for one year and then released over five years so there's a bit of um you know a linear dilution over time but again um still there foundation two percent of max supply unlocked at tge at genesis basically when the token was created two percent was already unlocked and released over two years uh, uh, linearly and then the ecosystem reserved there's a good portion here 13 percent of the max supply was already unlocked then released over another two years so at least the distribution of the tokens are going to be nice and linear and gradual over five to two to five years um but nonetheless we get our first unlock right here um and this is the majority of it right so this is what we have to be uh, aware of so uh just pay attention to this august 15th by then um we should be right at the top of the bull run so what we really have to understand is that who's going to be selling at that level as well if we're in a raging bull run and we're seeing a lot of good runs to the upside, I don't think anybody's going to be selling at that particular moment. But as soon as we start seeing signs of weakness in the market, potentially topping out from a bull run, you can expect that all those tokens that are being unlocked in the in the next little while, up leading up until August, will eventually sell on the market. They'll eventually hit the market and the people will be taking profit. So we'll watch out for that. I think this is an important thing, guys. Keep this, keep this in the back of your mind. All right, so let's keep on going. Um, let's keep on going the website again didn't give us any mu much about this but we we have it here we also don't have much about the team although the team is fully doxed it does require that you kind of dig around i wish they were up front and center about this on the website i couldn't find anything regarding the team regarding um the roadmap regarding the tokenomics regarding up anything on on uh, the website and even here getting started i couldn't uh local i couldn't exchange tutorial you can see that there's not much um regarding any of those um details so unfortunately this needs to be revamped there needs to be a lot more clarity for people they got to go one-stop shop get all their information and this is what this is for right this is the purpose okay so let's move on let's go back to here this team is fully docs but you got to dig around and find these links the uh, say labs actually has a linkedin profile which is pretty good and then you can go here and look at the people the 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 top people are definitely hosted here you have jeff you have let's see who else i i went through all of them uh, uh mr jog uh jay yendra is definitely here co-founder say labs and we have another couple other ones that was um that are heavyweights here part of the, the the senior team software engineers you got all kinds of people here that are definitely at it and definitely get, being very transparent here so that's a good thing you want very transparent um co-founder i think is a head of ecosystem at say labs and very important individual as well um so DeFi, nft gaming metaverse block you get what i mean so you can find information guys you can figure out where they went to school in california you can see that they have experience you can see that they're young and ready and aggressive and eager and they're very very successful they're, a lot of these guys are 30 under 30 so which means that you know what they have a vision they are already successful individuals and they know what to do to get this thing going and as can be seen as of now this project is flying right so what i expect is that their tokenomics is written the way they are because they value their team they value themselves quite highly and they understand in order to get this thing really really going they got to get in and basically with um, some early investors and that's why they have those early investors tokens allocated to private sale um guys they, they they want this thing to run so you got to understand this their tokenomics is basically created as a typical business where you get you know early investors to get this thing going and then after a while um yeah they get rewarded they, uh, of course they're taking a uh, chance nice and early so what you really have to do is do a deep dive get into a little bit more of those their details you can see if you get into jeff's profile you can see that where he went to school experience co-founder venture investor uh tmt investing banking they have banking experience uh the education you uh, he went to berkeley which is good business administration you know, so a little bit of everything a little bit of um yeah that's pretty good U ultimately and you can see that there's other in um, individuals on the team that are solid solo tech wise blockchain experience and all of that okay so let's move on good stuff there now as far as their roadmap another thing that is missing on their website is their roadmap and even the extra little things that i was able to find online honestly and talking about medium i do not like when teams re rely on medium for distribution of content of details 
sales. That is not a, a, a way that you should be running. You should have a an official roadmap that is there being update, updated constantly. Medium is not the place, okay? It's a blog. But nonetheless, they have some stuff here. I don't know how current it is. This is from June 7th, 2023. It could have changed. It could have been updated. You can see the phase, proof of concept, very vague, very, very vague. Uh, pilot testing, I think they're right around this phase right now, if I'm not mistaken. Again, it's very hard because their um, their descriptions are so vague that you don't even know where they're at in this. And then I found another deep um, roadmap that had this, and this is on the Binance.com website research um, pages where you can do research on Binance and you can see that there's there's some information here the metrics as of August 2023 so last summer uh what it is saying and then you can scroll down and you see a little bit of um technicals and then again the the token distribution that we've already talked about again 20% 20% 9% for me is significantly a, a, a lot which means that there's a bit of risk here and again the token release schedule the vesting schedule and then the milestones you know 22 you know not enough here you have 2022 2022 and then 23 and 23 and not enough and there's a little bit here of point form not enough you need a little bit more detail what does this mean where is the version two where is okay the main net look at all that just one point i think that this was just a rushed version of the roadmap not enough details not enough clarity and of course if you want to be bullish you want to make people bullish you have to sell them your vision what is their vision in the short term where are they going with this what's the, what's the next objective who are they going to be teaming up with what is what is it that's what you were buying here we're still in speculation guys so we need those details and for me that's an important one now uh so far the project has been looking decent um as far as what it wants to achieve but what what do we do about going forward where is the next step you get what i mean okay so let's move on uh that's that we kind of flew through a little bit of that let's look at let's go back to the website and let's see if the website can again pick us up um where we left off and get in, get into some research start building let's see where this goes i want to see uh, there was a link at the top let's see where the link at the top start building explore the ecosystem we did this already um there was an about let's see white paper blog media marines okay media press jobs docs ecosystem testnet what's this testnet app validators you can be a validator no doubt you can get rewarded for um being a validator being a holder staked all the good stuff this is very typical token standard token factory governance per so again ibs native oracle i don't see anything really that much that they offer here on the website with regards to detail um let's see if we scroll down a little bit okay meet with say liquidity alliance this is the liquidity alliance and that's about it media kit what's the media let's see what this is same media you can get into a little bit of details ex uh, explaining the trilemma uh so there's a lot of good um articles here okay it still doesn't um deviate from the fact that we need a little bit more clarity on this website okay we can't rely on these blogs right this, this is the this is the truth um okay pretty good okay so let's look at some of the metrics i think we covered the majority of things you know ultimately the project is a layer one right and again it, what does it do um it, it 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 basically gives us a solution for exchanges now if we look at the some of the tokenomics here on say you can see it's worth quite a bit its market cap is large now i'm not saying it's the largest i'm not saying it's small it's 1.6 billion dollar market cap guys for me this is a mature well matured um market cap meaning the growth the growth where are you going to go who are you going to compete with who are you going to comp compete with solana and that for me is probably the case but at a 1.6 million dollar market cap how many x's could you really do okay so this is one thing that we have to understand maybe a 10x maybe a 5x but right around that level and at the end of the day you're becoming a pretty big 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 project now if that's the case if that's the future for say great there's some um opportunity there circulating supply you're looking at about only 23 percent being in circulation that the rest of them are going to be you know basically distributed versus uh via that emission schedule that we talked about uh 24 hour trading volume is healthy guys very good trading volume which means that ecosystem is pumping that's really what you want that's really really what you want is um an ecosystem has utility and people in, in the general public are using it and that network effect is in full effect essentially um and that for me is important to see the trading 
trading volume. Fully diluted valuation, seven billion dollars, seven point two billion dollars. Guys, in my opinion, it's still in test net. Yes, it looks very promising, but it seems a little bit overvalued at the current moment. Just a little bit. I would like to see it come down just a bit um, before we continue with this bullishness. Um, and we'll look at the price action in a second to see if uh, if the, if there is any of those capabilities, those, those opportunities. Now, exchanges wise, guys, this is basically everywhere already. So it's well distributed. It's all over on major major exchanges. So if you're waking waiting for exchanges to list it to capitalize on that extra volume, guys, keep on waiting because it's not going to happen. It's already there, right? Uh, Bing X, Maxi, Coinbase. You're talking about Binance already. Bitget, Bybit, Gate, KuCoin, L Bank, and the list goes on. Kraken. You can get it everywhere. Coinex, Bitmart, and uh, all kinds of DEXs, Astroport, everywhere really at this point this aspect of the project is fully matured and and it's a good thing because you get lots of liquidity right you got lots of liquidity your ability to uh sell on the market given all that volume already you can see that there, you can uh buy and sell the token very very easily what i don't like is um obviously none of these exchanges have a, a lot of volume altogether they accumulated have a lot of volume but uh coinbase right now i think is at 13 percent, and then you got htx at 15 percent. which um you know i'm wondering if that how that how much how valid that is and up bit uh 50 and then binance of course 40 percent finance uh should be um it typically is one of the larger ones anyway okay so pretty good there overall the metrics not bad um do we expect to continue do we expect it um yeah I, I don't know guys it seems to be a very large market cap project and it's all about the utility so it doesn't really matter about the market cap do we expect that ecosystem to grow and still continue adding value that's the biggest concern for me all right guys um that's that let's take a look at the um the infographic that i release to you guys every every week when I do a deep dive, we talk about infographics. So this is my overall consensus. Um, this is what I think about the project, okay? So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. We can see that overall, the ecosystem is fastly growing. It's very well established already. It's got a lot going on uh, with it. You know, it is IBC, which means that it's uh, built on uh, Cosmos. And we know that that's very healthy because then you get a very interoperable uh, ecosystem. Now, if it becomes EVM compatible and it does have plans to do that, based on the roadmap go check out those uh simple roadmaps that they have uh, they don't really talk about it much but there has been some posts on socials uh with regards to this evm compatibility and what that means is that all ethereum projects will be able to run off of on the say network which means that all, all of a sudden their ecosystem will grow because now we'll get evm compatible or e uh, e ethereum based tokens basically um r r being able to run on the say network very very bullish so both uh, ibc and ebm is a very very good way of expanding the ecosystem really quickly utility so what is this token used for right rewards for validators this was not very clear and i had to do extra research beyond the website beyond the uh the white papers um and, or the document that it had there rewards for validators rewards for staking pays for gas fees and dow participation this is what the utility is for it's very typical it's very very typical nothing out of the ordinary this is what you expect and it's a 10 out of 10 because of that it's very secured it's very um let's put it this way we're we're familiar with this type of utility with the layer one uh, its roadmap it has a evm compatibility for version two around the corner that's what it wants to achieve and that will that is again very very bullish but it's roadmap all altogether it's not listed on the website nice and clearly with a nice graph or something like that even if it doesn't want to if they, they don't want to put it on the first page at least have a page that has a lot of these metrics tokenomics and you know um vesting schedules and all this kind of stuff so that we don't have to start digging around to other websites third parties and so on and so forth and uh, links to their overall um you know team the team in itself the team is super bullish but i had to start digging in order to find this information it's not something that should be done it should be transparent clear clickable right on the website 
where we can see the team and see if they're fully doxxed. So in this case, I think that the the negative is the website, not necessarily the project itself. The team is strong, stacked, really good, nice and young, ready to go. And for me, that's a good thing. Fully doxxed, a lot of information, a lot of details. Yes, they don't have the majority, a lot of, a lot of experience, but they do. They have enough to see this thing run, and they have they're well educated and well versed. So you know what? I I I back them ten out of ten. They're really really good, a really good team hopeful uh, dream team for the future 100% um, now what we have is the social aspect now we can couple in the website into this whole social aspect because the the website in a way in a way should be a modern version of a white paper it's a it's a basically a brochure to what this project is about in a very decorated way in a very nice pamphlet type of way and the website at this current moment from its first entry to figure out what this project is it doesn't do it justice unfortunately there has to be a little bit more of, of those details easy to achieve to um to get to you shouldn't have to dig around so much uh the socials are doing okay overall um their followers are going up 29 percent from the previous 30 days which is good they're at 42.77k not bad 68 percent of x posts in the last 30 days so it's not bad 68 more posts so it's up 6.3 percent Okay, that's not bad. At least they're going up. You know, we're not expecting the market is still at this current moment. And I would say even in the last 30 days, a little bit skeptical. So I can see what's happening because we know that the market is taking a bit of a breather overall, um, especially now that we've uh, we've been leading into the volatility of this ETF. We've seen a lot of the socials kind of hang back a little bit. So that's totally fine. They're doing OK, but they're discord guys for such a large project. Um, their discord is not really active enough it is active but it's not active enough i asked a question and it took about 36 hours for somebody to get back to me and in and in this case when you're talking about one point something billion dollar market cap project with heavyweights um as a team and they should have marketing dollars given the fact they got early investors they should be ready to go with somebody manning that discord answering questions quickly 24 hours a day and i've seen projects do that much much smaller than they are um i think that they really need to stay humble and get some marketing dollars and get somebody on that discord answering every single question within the first five minutes that's the reality because you never know who gets into that discord and starts asking questions and ultimately you shouldn't have to wait 36 hours for a question to be asked answered um and or even not even by the team or an official member that for me is not uh, um you know j just because you have um, um you know some people from the general public answering you shouldn't rely on them right you shouldn't rely on you should have some some sort of marketing guy or somebody there that's in communications ready to have um yeah to, to, to uh, relay some some links or offer some extra information so from that aspect eight out of ten the discord right now is the place to get the the the, the majority of your information or ask your questions it's even surpassing telegram in my opinion uh, so discord every project needs to have a solid discord team tokenomics i'm on the fence about this guys i'm not really crazy about it but it's it's also very typical especially when projects come out with especially layer ones number one layer ones usually have this type of type of scenario where you have private sales and the foundation and the team and all of that um, and number two i think that they value themselves as a team very highly which means um that they deserve they think that they deserve 20 percent, which i understand everybody's got to eat everybody's got to you know do their thing i guess at it um but we've been seeing in the last little while fair launches becoming very very popular now could it be that maybe because it is a layer one um it, it maybe it's not a feasible thing i don't think so especially the fact that it's behind the dow why couldn't the dow basically select the terms of which the team gets compensated in a different way or somehow i think that 20 percent is not bad but when you couple it up with the private investors because who are the private investors they're private nobody knows who they are in fact they could be part of the team and we don't know that and that's equivalent to about 40 percent at the end of the day they're early stakeholders equal to the team just because you don't work on the project doesn't mean that you're not uh, a private investor and vice versa you're an early investor team or a private sale it doesn't matter they have the same incentive if the market goes up and their tokens are unlocked they might might just sell on the market and that supply enters and that just right there is 40 percent and then you have the foundation that has another nine percent which i think they strategically knew that people might think this way 
and they didn't make it 10 to make it a 50 50 they left it at 49 which means that if even if you take my approach and start looking at the math they don't the tokens right now are not in majority in the early stakeholders because the foundation at this current moment is heavily run by the early investors and the team because they are because of the DAO, they own the majority of the tokens and they have the 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 right the, the the voting strength guys for me that's a bit of an issue early on okay and later on it may not be as much of an issue as more tokens get released to the market and we see other wallets holding and this is probably why now they don't even talk about uh, a wallet distribution because right now you'll see that the majority of the tokens that are released it's only 23 percent that are released are going to be held by a few wallets and for me that's a bit of an issue but it's normal in this stage for a layer one so take it as you will it's about a seven and a half because you have to understand that it's normal but at the same time it's not healthy okay so let's let's understand what that means um you know um be a little bit critical but at the same time understanding partnerships very strong strong backers and partners we're talking about death digital layer zero and what i found is another good one that just happened recently with the japanese um exchange uh, i think getting over to overseas um you know partnerships are very, is crucial for expansion in other um economies and that would be really really good to get into the asia market we, we know that the asia market has tons of capability and it's a, an emerging market for crypto so why not and i like that idea so i'll give you 10 out of 10 because they do have a lot more than partnerships than this or relationships let's keep it a little bit more <clears throat> broad a lot of relationships that could add some value and exchanges 10 out of 10 they're listed everywhere now some people might look at this as a a negative in the fact that you know a lot of people trade the new listings you know they get wind that the um, project might get listed on another exchange and then all of a sudden they go and they start buying uh, uh, expecting volume to increase and it may be the case it may be the case but at the end of the day right now we see that um, the token is pretty much listed everywhere which is a good thing because you get volume you get a lot of volume trading volume and if you want to buy and sell you got for every buyer there's going to be a seller and for every seller there's going to be a buyer and that is a healthy economy that's a healthy scenario for people that are into trading like you guys right so ultimately that's not bad very high ratings across the board a few little things that need to be corrected but ultimately pretty good um right now it's at about seven cents since i did the deep dive so it could have fluctuated overnight in the last little while market cap very similar trading volume again 25 percent of the mark of the circulating supplies in is trading in and out which is pretty good supply again 20 only 23 percent more or less is out there max supply 10 billion and fully diluted right now is a seven billion dollar fully diluted uh evaluation which for me is slightly high slightly high let's look at my overall verdict okay there's a few additional points here uh, just to reiterate, built on Cosmos IBC, interoperable blockchain communication protocol, bullish, bullish, bullish. And then we also have the EVM compatibility that is potentially coming in the future. So we're going to hit two birds with one stone and we're going to see this is ecosystem fly because ultimately um, getting those interoperability aspects from EVM and IBC is bullish. And it's a hot topic in the last little while. Part of the DeFi and exchange narrative. And now and they're taking that trilemma to the exchange trilemma, you know, basically basically coining their own little idea here is specializing in exchanges specializing in uh, um, offering solutions for exchanges and i think that's a backbone of any economy is the exchange and i think that's not a bad idea i haven't seen any project really take that on right now especially as a layer one and becoming a layer one that is going to host uh, solutions to all those other projects that want to be exchanges and very interoperable guys this is a very hot value proposition i kind of like it the problem is um is a little bit too overvalued in the short term i think it may be listed on many exchanges that's a good thing again mentioned that discord should have much more activity given its size and a lot more presence by the team you know getting a little bit uh technical and getting some good um you know engagement with the community they got to get somebody in there um uh, strong but should the, the team is strong they should be introduced on the website somehow they, they had to dig around and literally uh scrape the internet to find that and, and to find out who they were and what they're i know they're fully docs ultimately that's why i gave them a 10 of 10 they're a great team but when you don't have it on the website you don't have links on the website to the team to the roadmap to the this to the that it starts to lead you it starts to make you believe that why are you hiding why is that not readily available or is your website out to, out of date and that's another issue on itself that means you're, you're not dedicating enough man hours to keeping your your presence current so either way something needs to give 
that needs to be fixed future evm compatibility is promising strong bullish 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 token distribution is not the best giving approximately 50 percent to the tokens to early stakeholders whoever they are i don't care at the end of the day 50 percent of those tokens are going to run through the team through the early investors to the th through the um yeah the the foundation this and that and ultimately those are very it's a very centralized authority in those categories of distribution not crazy about that but it's a very typical thing uh governed by a DAO, and it should be explained in a lot more detail on the website no really big mention of DAO or anything like that and make in governance and so on so if that is the case that should be a big part especially with the fact that they have um such a uh token distribution this way they need to explain that at least there's a DAO there that are making this decisions and if they want to become part of the, de the decision making they need to be token holders so there has to be some clarity with regards to that uh decentralization is top priority especially for a guy like me i look at decentralization as one of the biggest value propositions no matter what the a project is and the um the the overall narrative that it tries to build um it doesn't matter i want to i want some proof that it is decentralized and a decentralized autonomous organization is a great start but if there's no information about it how can you get bullish on it so that's very important i think the website needs a massive overhaul to so that it could um, spell out some of these details very easily and make it a dynamic website where it can be updated nice and easily and they should be getting someone on the on the website and on the discord on on the communications aspect of things so I, with the market cap of so i would say soul would be its biggest competitor but that would be a massive um overtaking that would be a big big um thing to um you know a, a challenge to catch up to soul uh given the fact that soul is you know right there climbing especially in the last little while um it would be a nice 25x but i think that would be super ambitious i think it would be super ambitious if if say can reach 15 dollars, guys we're in the green that would be absolutely fine absolutely healthy you'd be killing it you'd be doing very very good with regards to gains you're looking at a 10 to 15 x easily easily and for me that would be a great thing but again none of these targets are actually valid unless we get the volume we get the bull run we get all of the sentiment to the bullish side and it's very very possible that this happens but we have to wait for momentum we got to see where this momentum takes us if it takes us to that level great we'll be ready but if it doesn't and we see that the price market wide prices not just talking about say is not going to give us these targets we can't be committed to a 50 Fifteen dollar price target if the market is starting to look bearish we have to exit earlier because still 10x 8x whatever it is is still deep in the green and whatever price we get to guys make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that bell because i'll definitely keep you up to date with what's with regards to what's happening would say pretty good stuff now i give it a 9 out of 10 overall a really solid project really really interesting stuff here okay guys i know you're here to talk about charts let's begin looking at Bitcoin, why not? Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, uh, sorry, I'd say, let's look at the say chart. The say chart, not Bitcoin, but Bitcoin at the last little while has been a bit flatlined while say is going sideways as well. You know, going sideways is not a bad thing. Ultimately, um, you, we see say um, holding up in a nice bullish pennant, maybe go sideways for the next little while. It could be very possible. But what I like the most here is that we might be producing a volume gap underneath. And that for me is important because we can identify weak spots. We can identify where the price will actually break if the break if it does break down we can see that we are getting a bit of divergence here higher highs on the price action stemming all the way from here okay really higher highs okay and then we are definitely getting up to here which is almost double top ish so we're getting a bit of divergence here but nothing crazy okay nothing totally crazy and even here you were seeing higher highs on the price action as soon as we get around here it's starting to dip so what i want to see ultimately okay and let's go on the, we're on the daily right now what i want to see ultimately is a nice clear divergence here okay and it might take some time right now we've seen that really what we're doing is kind of staying in overbought conditions for a significant period of time overbought 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 and ultimately i would like to see a bullish divergence right here in this level i'm not seeing it right now here on the daily the only thing that i do see is momentum falling and the mac the ema emas and red histogram bars are falling which insinuates the fact that we could be coming down for a short-term breather for another uh, uh impulsive move to the upside and that would be very very uh, in tune with with this bull flag that is building right here okay so let's look at this um in a bit more detail if you look at this as a bull flag you can see that ultimately this is going sideways like this we're building a bit of volume into here and what we want to see eventually is a break 
either to the upside or to the downside. So we'll kind of do one of these and say, look, if we break above this zone, it's very likely that we start making a higher high. If we break below this zone, it's likely that we come down and we start testing and start hunting liquidity at lower levels and looking for support. My first level, my first area of interest to expect some support is right around this area. So let me get a box going in here and you can see why, because I have a bit of a volume gap right here. Okay, I'm gonna make this red. And then there's another bit of a volume gap right below that could act as support. Now I'm taking this to the extreme, right? This is a very bearish scenario. Why? It's because we're coming down to the breakout point. This is the most important breakout point. Out of all this chart, let me get this down a little bit lower because lower, you can see the MACD is looking really bearish. EMAs are coming down, red histogram bars are coming down, and the RSI is also coming down. So the trend strength to the downside is picking up, and the momentum to the downside is also picking up in the, in, in, on the daily, which means on the daily, we might be looking for a dip. Now it doesn't happen all at once. We could be going for a bull flag, and then ultimately we might be looking for a breakout to the upside but what about if it's a failed breakout and we make a double top so we consolidate here let's go on the four hours so you can see this a little bit better you can see we're consolidating it's starting to look like a maybe a complex head and shoulders if we break the neckline which is all the way up here maybe a little bit higher okay but we have this previous high and then if we break that we're probably going to go test the higher high which means that we could go up a little bit and maybe get rejected here or maybe go up a little bit more to the 1.27 and then get rejected and then come back down and then finally fulfill the oversold condition let's see what's going on with the oversold conditions here on the rsi um right now it's in the macd uh, sorry it's in the chop zone here on the rsi in the 50 percent mark going sideways and the macd is EMAs facing up and potentially going into the bullish control zone in the short term on the four hour. But you can't negate the fact that daily is overbought, looking, pushing down, the MACD is really overextended and also pushing down at this current moment. So if it does happen, it may happen that we start building some sort of distribution pattern or some sort of rejection pattern that we're going to be coming down to a level where we where, where we are looking for support. We do have a little bit of potential here as well. I think the majority of the um, um, the TA needs to see the uh, conditions get oversold. We need this RSI to get in oversold conditions first, okay, whether it be on the daily or the four hour, ideally on the daily. A, a daily oversold condition state would probably take us down to about 43 cents. That's very, very likely, okay? Okay, statistically speaking, there's risk probability. Okay, if we get down to that level, that's the level to start buying the dip. Now, on the four hour, you can see that we're still in that chop zone, which means that if we get oversold, it's likely that maybe we come down and we get some support at the uh, orange level. And you can see that the gap is slowly building and we have some weak spot. Now, if we get um, a continuation to the upside, let's get back into that bullish state, swing high to swing low. 1.27 we could get rejected there we could even come up to the 1.618 extension and get rejected and still maintain a class a bearish divergence you can see that we have a high here higher highs on the price action lower highs on the rsi which this is a class a bearish divergence on the four hour and we could try to invalidate the bearish divergence by again making that slightly higher high but a failed breakout and then a quick rejection and come right coming right back down is um, the ideal scenario if you're looking for buying the dip now if it's going to continue to the upside remember we have that one dollar nice psychological level at one dollar which is at the 1.27 extension which is a very nice psychological level expect a bit of a reaction there you know the psychological levels play out more often than not so don't don't negate um, its possibility okay so we gotta understand that so we're very close for potential rejection it could happen we're in price discovery so that's a very risky place for people to go all in heavy i think the bulls will like a little bit of comfort to to say let's come down and back test some of this price action to confirm that we are getting another spring another impulsive move rather than buying in on the top on a, on a massive rally um we can buy in at lower levels with a bit more confidence at lower levels that would be ideal and trust me the bulls will be thinking like that it's only the retail market that's going to be thinking and getting in at the current moment after a huge rally to the upside you right so you got to understand that at this level right now it's not time to get offensive in fact it's time to get defensive and if you're going to get offensive and get into a long position you got to get in and you got to get out and i would suggest doing it on the lower time frames not even the four right now is giving us a clear indication of a long position you can see we're in the chop zone leaving the overbought condition and it's likely that we get oversold very soon and maybe come down for a bit of a dip 
And again, I'll keep you posted, guys. When I see these opportunities, uh, make sure that you uh, join that Discord. Guys, the Discord is where it's at. Lots of good alpha, trade setups, fundamentals, and learning material. Guys, if you want to join the Discord and find uh, and, and vote on the next deep dive that I do, uh, feel free to join and join the Discord, where uh, the, the channel that says um, that allows you to vote on the next deep dive. Guys, I do deep dives every Sunday, and uh, that is a good opportunity to get fundamentally bullish on some of these projects for the up and coming bull run take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip mm -hmm.